حِيلَةٌ إِلَّا رَجَاءٍ وَعَفُوكَ إِنْ عَفَوْتَ وَحُسْنُ ظَنِّي Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh and make yourselves comfortable for a very enlightening talk by Sheikh Yusuf Estes. Sheikh Yusuf Estes, I'm sure I would not have to say anything about him and everybody would know about who Sheikh Yusuf Estes is. But for those who might not, then this introduction might help. For his conversion to Islam, he was raised as a strong Christian Educated in Texas, USA, he became very successful owing music stores, television shows, and was a music minister and the preacher of the Bible. He was also a United States federal chaplain and delegate to the United Nations Peace Summit for Religious Leaders. Yusuf Estes is very loved by the young Muslims and by the young at heart Muslims who call him the funny Sheikh. Children and adults all delight to hear Sheikh Yusuf Estes talk about coming to Islam while trying to convert a Muslim from Egypt to be a Christian. An amazing story. It makes you laugh and cry at the same time. Without any delays, please welcome Sheikh Yusuf Estes. Started with something funny again. Sheikh Yusuf Estes. I told him, do you know why I kissed my hand? He said, why? I said, I knew it was clean. Bismillah, alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salam ala rasulullah wa ala alihi wa sabi ajma'in ashadu la ilaha illa Allah wa ashadu wa muhammadin abduhu wa rasul. Salam alaikum. All right. MashaAllah. Is everybody here? If you're not here yet, raise your hand. Okay, one, two, three. All right. Well, we'll wait for you. Now, nah. my name's Yusuf. Can you say Yusuf? You said it exactly right. All these years, my wife still says useless. <laughs> yeah, well, what can I say? Anyhow, <laughs> I just wanted to remind myself on this great opportunity about some words. I love words. And the first word which came in the Quran is a word derived from the same root as the word Quran. The word is Iqra. Iqra. Recite. It's a good reminder for all of us to think about the value of words. The first word I want to remember that Islam brings to us today, that we can focus on, that we can use, is the word starts with the letter C, choice. Islam makes it abundantly clear that you have a choice. You and I, we have a choice. The creator and sustainer of all that exists, he put us in such a way that if you want to believe, it's very easy. But if you don't want to believe, it's your choice. The choice is always there, isn't it? Another word I want to remember starts with the letter A. The word is avenue. Avenue, tariq. The way, avenue. And so Islam is bringing us a clear way, a clear avenue to go. Make the choice to go on this avenue. It's called Deen. In Arabic language, Deen. This is your avenue. This is your way. This is what you do. 
Another word, it starts with R. The letter R. Reality. Allah asks us again and again in his book to reflect on this reality. He even has a chapter in the Quran, Al-Haq. The reality. Another letter, it starts with the letter E. Letter E. Excellence. Islam provides for us excellence in today's world. The excellence that's devoid in other systems of social injustice, inequity, injustice, but when we compare it to the reality, back to that word, of the excellence that we find in Islam, see, this is the only avenue, back to the letter A. But we'll now come back to the first letter, C, choice. It's always your choice. Always it's your choice. Most of you were born in Islam. Let me ask this question. Is there anybody here tonight that's not a Muslim? Somebody, you're not a Muslim. Raise your hand. How do you like being surrounded by all these terrorists? I, I meant Muslims. I slipped. I slipped. Sorry. <laughs> by the way, you're most welcome. We love to have you be with us. We think you are very special to us because you came to hear, to listen, to partake along with us from these great events. To all of our guests, Muslims and non-Muslims alike, to the dignitaries who are with us today, my honored brothers and teachers in Islam, I love all of you so much for the sake of Allah. I ask Allah to guide us so that we can choose the right avenue of reality in excellence. Amen. Having said that, this is only the inauguration. This is the beginning talk for our programs that we look forward to the next three days. We very much appreciate all of those volunteers the many people behind the scenes that you don't see them who are working so hard and have been working for months to prepare this. They did the real work. Those of us who talk, we got the easy job. We just open our mouth and let the words come out. The rest of the brothers and sisters have been doing the real work, so we want to show real appreciation. I only have this one, but in spirit, I'm saying, take a picture of it and share it with each other. <laughs> because the real flowers go to them. They did the work, and we appreciate that. By now, it should have occurred to you that the letters that I chose must have some meaning. So let's go back and see what the first letter was. Choice, C. Huh? Avenue, A. Reality, R. Excellence, E. What does that spell? And more than anything else, more than anything else, Islam brings this reality to us, to care. Just as we take care of our religion and take care of our relationships with other people, the care that we have for Almighty Allah and the care that we have for everybody, even our enemies, we still care. Even our enemies who fight us, even though we might have to fight them, even then in our hearts, we're still praying, Oh Allah, guide this person. Guide this person. And there's no other way of life that teaches you to keep praying even for your enemies like this. It happened at the time of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. When his cousin Ali radiallahu anhu was engaged in battle and fighting against the enemy and the enemy, his sword broke or he lost it and he assumed that Ali was about to kill him. So he did the only thing he could think of. And he spit. He spit on Ali. 
So Ali pulls back the sword. And so, what? You're not going to kill me? He said, no. Because had I killed you before, it would have been for Allah, this religion, this deen, Islam. But if I do it now, it's for my own self. And this is forbidden in Islam. When we fight, when we engage, it is only to raise the banner of Islam, to bring about morality, to bring about peace, to bring about justice, because we really do care. If it's anything else, it's not for Islam. And the programs that you hear ahead of us now, you're going to hear some of the best of the best speakers in the English language present and bring to you this message, the message of really, what does Islam bring to us today? And all of the speakers are much more eloquent than I. But they let me be first because I'm the oldest and the cutest. Alhamdulillah. I heard something, it was mentioned here on the stage tonight, but I heard it also from our brothers earlier, talking about women and how important are the women to us. And our Prophet wasalam, said, the best, the best, Khairakum, the best of you, the best to your wife. And he said, and I'm the best of you, to my wife. Assalamu alaikum. Ramadan al Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I am Dr. Bilal Phillips, and I'd like to extend to all of the viewers of Peace TV my best wishes for this month. I ask Allah that He accept your fasts and your prayers and that they have had an impact in your lives, making you better people, which is the goal of Ramadan. Where truth is hidden, and misleading quotations create confusion. Where truth is hidden, lack of knowledge and wisdom cause upheaval and commotion. Where truth is hidden, manipulated scriptures and twisted facts emerge. This very hidden truth creates false propaganda, mayhem, chaos, disorder, and turmoil in our lives and the world order. But is there anyone with courage and wisdom? What is the truth and who has the courage to expose it? Because it's the right to know the truth. Right. Watch Truth Prevail and Lies Perish in Truth Exposed by Dr. Zakir Naik tomorrow at 10.30 p.m. and repeat telecast at 7.30 a.m. India on Peace TV. Sheikh Yusuf Estes for the talk and we're hoping to have the question and answer session and before we begin the question and answer session and in order to derive maximum benefit out of the limited time we have available with us these are some of the rules that have to be followed we have three mics placed in this convention hall Two for the gents and one for the ladies. The gents can queue up on both of the question answer mics that have been provided. And one of them is also presented at the sister's corner. Questions must be 
on the subject, which is peace and prosperity, Islam's goal for humanity. Any question which is out of the topic will not be entertained. Our first preference will be given to the non-Muslim guests here. So I request the volunteers to kindly have the non-Muslims pose the questions first. Before posing your question, it is important for you to name yourself and your occupation in order for the speakers to understand your background and answer accordingly. May we have the first question from the brother's side. Yes. I am Abu Ahmed from Egypt. I ask about what's the real role of women in Islam. Bismillah, alhamdulillah, wa rasulullah. Actually, it's interesting, and we have a whole series about it, but I'll just tell you one word. I love words. Can a woman be imam? This was a big question, you know? And they were making a big problem about this for some of the Muslims. A woman, imam, oh, oh, astaghfirullah, oh, billah, you know? They said many things, ajib. But guess what? One of the scholars, he was sitting with me and he said, oh, look at this. When a man is the imam in his home or in a masjid, he's imam while he's what? Leader, leader of the salah. But as soon as he said, Assalamu alaikum Assalamu alaikum then he's finished. He's not the imam anymore. He's saying, well, it's over and there's no salah. Yes or no? But a woman, when she has a baby, she's what? Um. Yes? Um. Like Um Aisha. Um Muhammad. Um. The mother of. Yes or no? Yeah? And so um, it means leader, because it comes from the exact same root. But it's different, because a woman is different than a man. A man is only a leader sometimes, but a mother is a leader all the time. And by the way, you remember the Hadith of Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. This is not from me, I learned it from the scholars. But the Prophet Sallallahu he was asked a question. After Allah and his messenger, who has the most haq, the most rights on me? Salah Rasul Sallallahu your mother. And then who? Your mother. And then your mother. And then your father. This was a shock. Because at the time this came, nobody had something like this throughout the world, not just in the Arabian Peninsula, which was filled with, they use the word jahiliya, ignorance. They were mistreating women in a horrible way. You don't want to know how bad they had the treatment. But at the same time, it was this way in other parts of the world too. The church of Rome in the seventh century, this is the same time as Muhammad Sallallahu coming with the message, the 600s. The Church of Rome conveyed a council and part of what they talked about, the subject is, does a woman have ruh? Does she even have a soul? So look how Islam is bringing this again and again and again, showing us the respect, the dignity and the honor of each, but keeping everything in a balance. Always rights. We talk about Women's rights, children's rights, grandparents' rights, the rights of animals, the right, yes, even the rights of the nature itself, the rights of trees that people talk about today. Islam always said this, always. But it also brings the balance, the limits, the limits. I have rights, you have rights, we both have limits. And this is what people forget. So Islam gives us the balance. Very good question. Thank you, Abu Ahmed. Next question from mic number two from the brother's side. Yes, please. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Alhamdulillah, I came here to see you, uh, uh, Sheikh Brother Yusuf Steph. I always see you on the internet. Alhamdulillah, I've learned a lot from you. My name is uh, Nael uh, Sabado. I came from the Philippines, born in a Catholic family, and uh, I embrace Islam. 
Um, I would just like to ask a question because uh, the hadith that you have mentioned regarding the uh, who has the most rights after Allah and Rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam was our mother. Unfortunately, until now, my mother is not yet a Muslim. Inshallah, Allah will guide her. Inshallah, it's always my thoughts. Inshallah. Inshallah. How can I show respect and love to my mother, even though she's not a Muslim? Zakhlaq. Yes, brother. I understand where you are coming from because my mother also did not accept Islam. And I didn't really understand. Some people told me when I came in Islam, you have to hate anybody who is kafir. Some people, misguided people, told me you have to hate anybody who is not Muslim. If they're kafir, they said it like this. They are kufar. You have to hate them. I said, what about my own mother? Kufar. You have to hate them. One of the things that this conference is going to show us, all of us, from our dear beloved teachers and scholars of Islam, we're going to find that this is a big mistake, the way that they said it. We as Muslims always hate injustice. We hate volum. We hate anything that takes people away from the light of Islam. We hate the people who are doing the haram while they're doing the haram. But you don't have to hate your mother. You don't have to hate your parents. You keep praying for them and you keep asking Allah to guide them because even if they're not Muslim, they still have the rights on you. And the proof is not from me. The proof is not from today's shiyukh saying this or that. The proof is in this book, in Surah Luqman, chapter 31. Allah is telling us about Luqman and Luqman is somebody talking to his son and he says, Oh my son, you have to worship Allah alone without any partners. This is the first rule in Islam. Always that. And obey your parents in everything illah, except if they want you to worship other than Allah. This you can't do. But everything else, you can give them service and kindness. You can put your head on the ground, they can step on your head, okay. But don't worship other than Allah. This is number one rule. So please, brother, keep giving them service. And don't argue, oh my God, here's another point. Some brothers told me everything in Islam is debate, debate, debate. So I started debating with my father right away. When I got to Islam, I turned to him with the very same thing that I was debating against Islam. But now I came from the other point. And we would argue night after night. And my father would listen to me, I'm shouting, and he would shout, and I would shout. And some brothers came to my house, some very beautiful brothers. You know what they said? They said, don't do this. Your father has rights on you, and you cannot do this. You just give him service and pray for him. Within one week, within one week, I heard my father say these words, there's no God except the law, and Muhammad is his messenger. Your job and my job is to live the message, live the message, and let people observe and understand from our action. When the wife of the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said these words, some people mistranslated it, I think. They didn't give the meaning. But if you would like to see the Quran walking, if you want to see the Quran in action, Look to Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Do you think it means no? Muhammad sallallahu They saw the way he was with the people. They observed something that we all need to know about akhlaq, manners, behavior. Then it's up to Allah. If Allah wants them to be guided, they'll be guided. So show them, give them the real Islam of Islam. Show them with your action. And then every night, pray for them. And the brothers that I met from Pakistan, the teachers that we had, they said these words. Be like a farmer. Plant your seeds in the day. And then water them at night. The seeds are the seeds of the da'wah, of la ilaha illallah.
And then in the night, you get up and you cry. So it's da'wah in the day and du'a in the night. And maybe up to Allah. But before they die, maybe Allah will guide them. I pray for them. I sincerely ask Allah to guide them. Amen. Amen. Thank you, brother. Please, Cheerio. all of you, pray for his parents. Pray for all those who just haven't got the message yet. Let's make du'a for them. Allah help them to see the truth. Amen. Ilahi, ilahi,